dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Proudly we hail, starring William Holden in The Victim of Circumstance, the United States Army and Air Force presentation. And now, here is your host, our Theater of Stars producer, C.T. McGregor. Thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to Proudly We Hail, where each week we proudly present your favorite star in a story we hope you'll enjoy. The name William Holden on any theater marquee is indeed a welcome sign. And here on our theater of stars, we welcome Bill to the role of Peter Donaldson in the delightful comedy, The Victim of Circumstance. It's a story of a blessed event with a surprise ending which only Mr. Stork himself could have conjured. But before the curtain rises on Act One, here's Wendell Niles. Wherever station, your regular Army and U.S. Air Force men are doing a job. The job... Maintenance of world peace. Abroad, there are occupation tasks. And at home, there are domestic obligations in training and in public service. These regular Army and Air Force men are benefiting themselves, too. They are continuing their education throughout their service and are receiving the best vocational training in the world. Theirs is a worthwhile career. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Victim of Circumstance, Starring William Holden as Peter Donaldson. It wasn't much of a home Peter and Virginia Donaldson occupied. Dingy, gray, one-bedroom flat with windows so small it seemed aloof to the sunlight. A tiny apartment, if you call it that, reached by a rickety stairway that went up three flights. But if you had entered it the morning our story begins you'd have felt there a warmth which sometimes is alien to the finest mansion, that intangible warmth which defies all problems. And Peter Donaldson most certainly faced a problem. Peter? Yes, darling? Breakfast is on the table. I'm coming. Good morning, dear. <laughs> and here's a kiss for you. Oh, thank you. Well, my pleasure, I assure you. Oh, no. Not breakfast food, not again. Well, it's at least expensive, Peter. Yeah, so it is. And good, too. Stomach, shake hands with an old friend. Oh, Peter. <laughs> mm. You know, darling, I, I sent in that slogan for the Sudsy Soap Contest. You did? Oh, uh, what is it now? Oh, you don't mean you haven't you've forgotten it already. Well, you only told me one. Yeah, well, let's see now. Oh, yes. When it comes to soap, I'd lather you Sudsy any time. Why, darling, that's very good. Very good. Downright sensational. It ought to win a prize. You know, they announce it right after the first of the year. Oh, dear. I'll get it. Don't tell me they're starting to call this early in the morning. Hello? Uh, this is the Bon Ton Clothier's credit department. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm calling about your account with us. It's long overdue. We don't like to take legal steps. Oh, no, no. You wouldn't want to do that. You are, Mr. Donaldson? Well, I'm uh, uh, Mr. Donaldson's secretary. Uh, Mr. Donaldson is very busy working out an advertising campaign for a big soap company. It must have slipped his attention. I'll mention it to him. Goodbye. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Donaldson resident. Mr. Donaldson's secretary speaking. Come now, Peter. You're not trying to make a fool of the hand that feeds you. Oh, hello, Sam. Well, that's better. I'm in no mood for Tom Poolery, Peter. I'm reading the handwriting from my cup here at the delegatessen, and I'm choking. I know, Sam. Ah, out of the kindness of my heart, I'm extending credit. And I expect some time to reciprocation yet. I'll get something to you this week, Sam. I promise you. Oh, our trusting friend. Oh, well, don't worry, Peter. Well, darling, something's got to break for us. For all of us, it's just got to. Oh, it will. It will. Say, Peter, I believe today's the day. The day for what? Uh, for your appointment down at O'Brien's department store. Oh. I wrote it down somewhere. Oh, yes. Here it is. O'Brien's department store, today at 9.30. 9.30? 9.30? What, oh, it's 9.15 now. I haven't much time. Where's my coat? Uh, here you are. Now, where's my hat? On your head, silly. Oh, oh, thanks. Oh, no, no. 
You're visiting a doctor today. Uh-huh. You, you'll be very careful, won't you? <laughs> of course I will. Oh, yeah. Say, who do I see down at O'Brien? Uh, the employment director, Mr. Bakenut. 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 Sit down, young man. Uh, thank you, Mr. Grapenut. The name is Bakenut. Oh, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I must have been thinking of breakfast. But you certainly weren't thinking of making a good impression upon me. You're Donaldson, aren't you? Yes, sir. You're here to apply for a job? That's right, sir. For jobs are scarce, particularly here to Brian. Where we demand only the finest personnel. I'm afraid there's nothing for it. Oh, but Mr. Bakenut, I, I just got to get a job. One moment, please. Yes? Mr. O'Brien is calling you. Hey, uh, yes, 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 Mr. O'Brien. Hey, Ned, I'm calling about your speech last night. Hey, uh, yes, yes, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, the one you made for the Eastside Ladies Auxiliary. Well, uh, did I say something wrong? Perhaps I should have sent it up to you for approval. Oh, no, 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 Bagnard. You were great. They wrote it up in the Herald. They did? One paragraph right next to the obituaries. And the plus for O'Brien's department stores in it. Oh, well. Every little bit counts. Keep up the good work, Bagnard. Remember, the O'Brien tradition lives because of two factors. Merchandising and publicity. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, that was nice of you. That was the boss. <laughs> now, young man, uh, where were we? Uh, we were talking about a job. Oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> right next to the obituary. I'll have to get a copy. <laughs> now, uh, your job. Young man, you've made such a favorable impression upon me. I have? Yes, you have. I'm going to give you a crack at the one opening I have. This is an exceptional opportunity. It is? A splendid opportunity. But the qualifications come high. First of all, the job requires an unmarried man. You are uh, single? Well, I, uh... <coughs> I'm not twins, Mr. Baker. Not... <laughs> not twins. Oh, well. Now, as I said, this job requires a single man. We have 26 stories, you know. There's so many transfers, and married men so often get this uh, tied down. But now your educational background... High school? Uh, yes, sir. College? Yes, sir. Degree? I have a B.A. in economics, Ohio State. Is that all? Uh, master's in business administration, Columbia. Well, well, young man, I think, I think you just might qualify. You mean it? Yes. Yes, Mr. Bagnat. Will you come in, Miss Jones? Yes, Mr. Bagnat. Uh, Miss Jones, this is Mr. Dunn. I'm glad to know you, Miss Jones. Likewise. Uh, before I forget it, Miss Jones, will you get me the obituary page from today's Herald? Who died? I am not interested in that. My address last night was written up right next to the obituary. Oh, uh, now I understand. <laughs> Isn't it nice? <laughs> well, now, Mr. Donaldson here has all the qualifications for the opening we have. He's single, five years of college, B.A. master. You will put him to work tomorrow. Assistant stock clerk in the perfume department. <laughs> Now, maybe that doesn't sound like a lot to you, but it certainly did to me. Why, in these times, you have to have a college degree to pedal gas in the filling station. I couldn't wait to get home to tell the good news to Virginia. I ran up those stairs three at a time. Virginia! Virginia! Oh, Peter, you got it. You got the job. Oh, it was a cinch. Your husband, my darling, is now the assistant stock clerk in the perfume department at O'Brien's department store. Oh, that's wonderful. And I was so worried about all I knew it meant. And the old... What a smile this will bring to the faces of Sam and, and the Bonton clothiers, and, well, I can think of a lot more. But tell me, how did it happen? Oh, nothing to it. I made it by the skin of a couple of diplomas. Oh, I knew you would. They wanted a single man, and I, well, I had to sort of avoid the question. Anyway, that's not important. Oh, but uh, why a single man? Well, they do a lot of transferring around, evidently. I... Oh, Peter, don't say that. Not now. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I, I didn't mean to alarm you. Did you see the doctor? Mm-hmm. Uh, how was everything? Just perfect. Uh, what did he say? When? Oh, uh, any time now. He said you'd better notify the hospital. That's why I didn't like to hear you say what you just did. Oh, darling, we should be grateful for this. Oh, I know, but... Well, I... I want you near. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, but they said... Oh, nonsense, honey. Uh, tell me, uh, did the doctor tell you what he thought it was going to be? He wouldn't say. Well, I know. You do? Oh, I'm sure of it. We're going to have a girl. And she's going to look just like you. Oh, Peter. You really mean it? Oh, my beautiful wife. Early the next morning, I went over to make arrangements at the hospital. And then I went to work. 
My job was highly technical and very complicated. I had to open crates, unload perfume, dust off the bottles, and stack them. And they didn't even give me a secretary. My boss in the storage room was named Bean. Hey, you. Uh, yes, sir. I'm going out for a cup of coffee. Don't let anybody in, you understand? Oh, I understand, sir. Now, just consider yourself at Fort Knox, Donaldson, and act accordingly. This perfume is like gold anyway. <laughs> I got you, sir. And be careful with them big 10-ounce bottles. Uh, yes, See sir. You later. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see, this crate here. Anybody in here? Uh, yes, I'm in here. I'll open the door, two friends. Is that you, Bean? No, it isn't Bean. Open up. Oh, I'm sorry, but nobody gets in. On who's the Uh, Bean. Ah, uh, we'll see about that. Down in Yes? Open up there. This is Satan. Oh, yes, sir. You've made a dreadful mistake. You became Mr. O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien? Oh, I didn't recognize his voice. Oh, you're the one. Who is he, Big Nut? I knew it was the stock clerk in perfume. Since when are we hiring assistant stock clerks in this department? But it's only for the holiday season, Mr. O'Brien. Big Oh, oh my. I, I, I guess I broke a bottle of perfume. And you had to pick out the ten-ounce size to break? You, you... And you, Baker, you your judgment diminishes with every passing day. <laughs> Butterfingers. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bignut. Uh, Bean told me to keep everybody out, and I, I didn't recognize Mr. O'Brien's voice. That's a reasonable offense around here. Haven't you heard the O'Brien radio program, which Mr. O'Brien produces, writes, edits, directs, narrates, and sings bass at the quartet? I'm afraid I haven't. Well, you should have. Ever heard him sing, you'd have recognized the bellow. Well, I just wish I had. And he's in a bad frame of mind, anyway. Haven't had him switch in the paper for over a month. Oh, well, carry on, Don. Oh, just one thing, Mr. Baker. You didn't mean that about the holidays only, did you? I most certainly did. Uh, but I need this job, Mr. Baker. I really need you're it. You're certainly not demonstrating your words with action. Oh, maybe you're just one of those unfortunate victims of circumstances. Well, isn't there a chance for me, Mr. Baker? Not here, I'm afraid. Not here, please. But then there are other O'Brien stores. I'm certain I can get you a transfer, say, to the Siberia of the O'Brien domain. Oh, where's that? O'Brien's Cucamonga. As a matter of fact, I think it'll be a, a good thing for all concerned. I'll arrange it as soon as I can. We pause briefly from our story, The Victim of Circumstance, starring William Holden, to bring you an important message. Here's something tailor-made for you men who have served after September 1945. You can re-enlist now and be assured of duty for at least three years with a unit of your choice. That's correct. Three years guaranteed with famous divisions now stationed in the USA. Right now, there are eight outfits stationed in the United States that need top-quality men. They are the 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry Divisions, the 2nd and 3rd Airborne Divisions, the famed 82nd Airborne, and the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade. If you have served in any of the armed forces abroad since the 2nd of September 1945, you're eligible to apply. In addition, veterans, you may be able to re-enlist in non-commissioned ranks. And remember this, these divisions probably will remain in this country for at least three years. Get the details at your local U.S. Army recruiting station right away. And now, Act Two of The Victim of Circumstance, starring William Holden as Peter Donaldson. A few days have passed, and Peter, realizing both the necessity and the imminence of the transfer to O'Brien's Cucamonga, has withheld the information from his wife, Virginia. However, Virginia has noticed the change in Peter and is ready to remark about it that morning at breakfast. More coffee, please, honey. Yes, dear. Peter, I seem to notice. Oh, um, I'll get it. Hello? Peter, this is Sam. And I'm full with smiles. Oh, oh. Virginia paid you something on account? Virginia is surprising me with a considerable payment. And, Peter, I'm learning from Virginia you have a fine new job. Well, uh, it's a job. Congratulations, and keep up the good work. Already what I'm having on one cup is completely canceled. 
And only two cups to go. Goodbye, Peter. Uh, goodbye, Sam. Sam just said... Okay, Jim. I'll show the bond time code you. Oh, it won't be long until we catch up on all of them. No, no, it won't be long. Peter, is something bothering you? Why, no, no, nothing at all. You should tell me. Well, there's nothing. Uh, say, I, I'd better get going. Uh, I'll be late for work. You're staying close to the telephone these days, aren't you? Yes, darling. Oh, don't worry about anything. It'll all work out. Why, well, just think. They'll soon have the results of that contest you entered. Oh, say, that's right. I'd rather you said be soap. <laughs> <laughs> what a slogan. Well, I'll be going. Goodbye, sweet. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> Maybe Virginia was right. Maybe I did have a winner. And then I wouldn't have to leave her. About 11 o'clock, Mr. Bakenut called me up to his office. And I just knew it was about the transfer. Sit down, Donaldson. Oh, thank you. You have news for me, Mr. Bakenut? I have news for you. No transfer can be effected now or at any foreseeable time in the future. Well, well, that's the way it goes. All the other O'Brien branches, O'Brien Cookamonga included, have raised their standards. They're taking only PhDs in the stock department. Oh. Oh, well, that lets me out. There's one more thing, Donaldson. I've just had the session of my life with Mr. O'Brien about you. You have? You are very lucky to have lasted out the holiday. Uh, yes, Mr. Baker. And I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm going to try to keep you on. Oh, you are? Oh, thanks, Mr. Baker. But I warn you, things are very edgy up there. The photographer even forgot to retouch Mr. O'Brien's picture for Life magazine. Oh, um, that'll give you an idea. Wow, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So I warn you, don't give me the slightest excuse to fire you. Just don't tell me. Excuse me, Mr. Baknard. Beans. Hey, I've been looking all over for you, Peter. Your wife called. She's gone to the hospital. My wife? Your wife? Sir? I didn't know you had a wife. Well, I've got a wife, yes. She's a wonderful wife. I, I've got to get to the hospital. We're going to have a baby. But you said you were a single man. One side, Mr. It's Baker. It's in the fire. You falsified your application to get this job. And that's the same thing you'd have done under the same circumstances. Don't you talk to me like that, young man. I said one you're side. You're tempting me. You're tempting me terribly. Do whatever you want, Mr. Baker. But i got to get out of here. i got to get to the hospital. I got to the hospital as quickly as I could. And I wasn't thinking about the perfume department at O'Brien's. A uh, nurse met me on the floor. Not yet, Mr. Donaldson. Oh. You can wait in that room over there. I'll call you. Uh, is this the waiting room? Yeah. Why don't you sit down, friend? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tried that. It's no good. Oh, you're waiting too, huh? Yeah. But uh, my name's Donaldson. Oh, mine's Novak. <laughs> Glad to know you, Mr. Novak. Yeah, same here. Who's he? Not a sleeping beauty. <laughs> I'm not a... How can a guy sleep through all this? Eh, yeah. it's just seven. Oh. How long you been waiting? Eh, yeah. six hours. Six hours? Wow. It runs in my wife's family. Oh, yeah. nothing to be concerned about, I guess. What are you hoping to get? Oh, boy. <laughs> you? Oh, boy. Of course, I'd settle for a girl. My wife wants a girl. Yeah, that's funny, mine, too. You know, it's wonderful, ain't it? The way they're so strong all the way through it. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, too. The things they demand. Isn't it the truth? Well, you know, once my wife woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah, I know just what you mean. Well, she wanted a candy bar. You know the kind with the nuts on the outside of the chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> So I get up, and I go to every drugstore, and I can't find it. Mm. But finally, I find a candy bar that's the same thing, only the nuts are in the inside. Yeah. Well, I bring it home to her. She takes one look at it and starts crying and says, this ain't what I wanted at all. <laughs> oh, brother, ain't it the truth? But you had it lucky. You know what my wife went for? No, what? Phonograph records. <laughs> and what phonograph records yet? All she wanted to listen to was John Charles Thomas. Thing in all them areas and cantatas and stuff. Night and day, John Charles Thomas. Mm. And me a lover of pop music yet. Yearning for a little dipsy too. Yes, nurse? Yeah? Nothing at all. Just wanted to see if everybody was happy. Uh, oh, I see that one is. Mm, I only wish that could happen to me. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Yes, yes? Donaldson. What? What? Congratulations. Yes. Yes, go on. Well, you've just become the father of a seven-pound baby girl. A girl? Why, well, it's just what Virginia wanted. I know. If you ask me, you're being unfair to fathers. I got here first. Your wife's doing just fine, Mr. Novak. How is my wife? Oh, how else could she be? Splendid. You can see them now if you want. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, good luck, Novak. Thanks. Uh, you won't have to wait much longer, I know. They showed me my baby girl. My baby girl. You know, when I first looked at her, I, I was just a little bit disappointed. But when I saw her besides all the others, then... Then they took me to Virginia. She wasn't quite out of it. I whispered something to her. I don't even remember what it was. But I sat by the bed, looking at her, loving her very much, and waiting for her to speak. Then the nurse came in. Mr. Donaldson, you want it on the telephone. Oh, me? Mm-hmm. They say it's very important. Oh, all right. I walked down the hallway, following the nurse. Returned to the world of reality. I thought of Sam, the store, the Bonton clothiers, baked nuts, and, and my new family. You can take it here. Oh, oh thank you. Hello? Donaldson? Yes? This is Mr. O'Brien. Oh, Mr. O'Brien. Congratulations, Donaldson. Oh, well, thank you, sir. And be sure to congratulate Mrs. Donaldson. Oh, I will. Thank you, sir. And now, don't leave the hospital. I take great pride in these things. I'm coming right over. Yes, it was my boss. My big boss. And he's coming right over. That's so strange. Oh, you don't know my boss. Well, well, Donaldson, you can congratulate me. I made it. You did? Yeah, I'll say. Triplets yet. Triplets. Yeah, three boys. Plenty rugged looking, too. Hey. Hey, maybe there's something in that. You told me how your wife listened to nothing but John Charles Thomas. Hey, I never thought of that. Maybe they're rich. Sure, maybe you ought to name them John, Charles, and Thomas. Oh, no. Remember me? I'm the Dipsy Doodler. These boys are going to be called Bing, Frankie, and Perry. I went back to Virginia. I still couldn't figure out what was bringing Mr. O'Brien to the hospital. But the next morning, as I sat by Virginia's hospital bed, I was on top of the world. I bought a newspaper, and it was spread out all before. And for the first time in months, all problems solved. And Virginia held our daughter next. Oh, Peter, isn't she beautiful? Oh, she's just like her mother. She never cries, does she? Oh, no. Good babies never cry. Uh, that is, except once in a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, Peter, everything's happened at once. Our new baby, the Sudsy Soap Contest. Yeah, we've got a soap supply for a whole year, oh. even with diapers. Oh, and wasn't it exciting having all the newspaper photographers down? Yeah, you know, for a minute, I, I thought the photographers came down because of the contest. I did, too. How'd you like the pictures of Nancy? Just beautiful. And Mr. O'Brien took a nice picture, too. Yeah, he had to get in the act. What a ham. <laughs> he loves the publicity. Oh, that's why he offered me the job. A good job. Oh, aren't we lucky? Yes, son. You know something, darling? What? You're a perfect mother. I am? Sure. You've given the world the most beautiful baby girl ever. And in addition, the very first baby of the new year. Curtain falls in the final act of The Victim of Circumstance. A star, William Holden, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. A little earlier in the program, I told you veterans about a special plan for ex-servicemen in the regular army. If you missed any of the details then, I'd like to go over them again. First, you must have had duty in any of the armed forces outside the continental limits of the United States. This service must have been after the 1st of September, 1945. Then, if you qualify... You may enlist in the Army now and have your choice of eight organizations now stationed in the United States. These units range from armored and airborne divisions to an engineer brigade. This is what you've been waiting for, isn't it, veterans? It's your chance to serve with your old offset. Don't forget this point. You may re-enlist in non-commissioned grades up to and including sergeants. 
Ask your local U.S. Army recruiting officer now to give you details of this special plan. Now again, our star, William Holden, and our producer. There are two virtues which combine to make our star, William Holden, as popular here in Hollywood as elsewhere. That of being a top performer and a real fellow. Bill, thanks for a swell performance you've just given us. Well, thank you, C.P. You're very generous. You know, Bill, you, you played that role of the expectant father with great conviction. <laughs> well, I should have, C.P., what with three youngsters of my own. <laughs> oh, you have three now. That ought to make the baby food people very happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Not to mention all the unemployed babysitters in the neighborhood. <laughs> Seriously, though, Bill, you and your very lovely wife, Brenda Marshall, must be proud of having one of the finest families in Hollywood. And I'm sure... Only such a family could conceive and carry out your very generous plan of last Christmas. It was more practical than generous, C.P., but we did get a lot of satisfaction out of it. Would you tell us about it? Well, we simply took the money we'd planned to spend on Christmas gifts for our friends here in America and sent it to the care organization in New York to help bring Christmas into the homes of the needy Europeans. A wonderful plan, Bill, and one which doesn't have to stop with Christmas, but can be carried out the whole year through. Now again, Bill, thanks for coming down. A privilege, C.P., to appear for such an important sponsor. But before I get away, uh, what's on tap for next week? Next week's story on Proudly We Hail is called History in the Making. The story of Kelly Jones, Debonair New York lawyer, who finds the girl of his dreams reading a history book in the public library and who is almost betrayed by the little black book in his pocket. And our star will be that favorite of film goers everywhere. George Murphy. George Murphy. That sounds great. I'll be listening, C.P. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bill. Thanks again for a swell performance. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Proudly We Hail stars George Murphy in a gay romance, History in the Making. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Forget next week, George Murphy on Proudly We Hail. Forthcoming programs of Proudly We Hail will star Elizabeth Scott and Ruth Warwick. William Holden appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges the appearances of all stars on this program. Script was by Rich Hall. Music by Eddie Scrivanis. This is Wendell Niles speaking.